Philippines. It is in the Southeast Asian region of the world in Asia. Let's take a look at about the past fast facts about the Philippines. This is our official flag. It's a blue on the top and a red on the down. It means to say that the country is in peace. I think the Philippine flag is the only flag in the world which can turn upside down. When the flag is turned upside down and the red is on top, that means the country is in war. But now, for the reason here, it's always in blue. So the Philippines is at peace. And we have the three stars here, which symbolizes the three largest islands of the country. This is the map of my country. This part here, this one, until that part on the northern one is the Luzon Island. It is the biggest island in my country. Then we have the second largest island, which is the southern part, this one. That is Mindanao. And this middle part here is what we call Visayas, the smallest of the three primary islands. The capital is Manila, which has 11 million people. And our population is about approaching now to 92 million. It is the 12th largest population in the world. And on the website I browse on the net, on the immigration office, I think Filipinas are in the US about numbering to 3 million. Okay. Our government is unitary presidential constitutional republic. That means to say it is a centralized government. We have three branches like what we have in the United States of America. It has executive, legislative, and judiciary. But since it is a centralized government, the central government or the national government holds most of the power, but it tries to deliver that to the local government. We got our independence from the Spanish on June 12, 1898, and our national language is Filipino. That is vested in our constitution Article 14, Section 6 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. But of course we speak English. As young as we are, we are trained to speak English. That is one of our official languages that is also vested in our Philippine Constitution. Article 14, Section 7 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Okay. Our major religions include Catholic, Christianity, and Islam. And our currency is Philippine Peso. Our economy is the 48th largest in the world and it's still improving. Although I admit the country is struggling, it's in crisis for the past years, but it's getting better this time. Okay, would you like to visit my country? I am invited to visit my country. A lot of beautiful places you would see in my country. Let's take a look. This is Banawi Rice Terraces, one of the seven wonders of the world and one of UNESCO's world heritage. It, you can see this rice plantation in each ladder. It's like a ladder going up. It is made by the Ifugao people of my country. It's one of the beautiful places you can visit. Then we also have the chocolate hills. I know you're, you, you know you know Kisses chocolates? Kisses? Okay. When you see these hills, they're like chocolates. They turn brown, especially during summertime. So when you're from a distance, you would see like small chocolates of hills. So we call it the chocolate hills. Okay? Then we have here Boracay Beach. White sand, pink sand, black sand. We have it in my country. And this is Boracay Beach, the best beach in Asia. Then we have Mayon Volcano, dubbed to be as a perfect shaped volcano in the world. You can see that crest over there is almost like a perfect cone. Then we have Pagsanhan Falls, one of the beautiful falls we have in our country and of course falls in my country is also a source of hydroelectric energy. But mind you, the Philippines is more than this. It is more than a beautiful country. It is a caring country. A country which cares for its elders, for young people, for women, for people with disabilities, and for the rest of the community. We care for our elders. We love our old people. This is a medical mission for the elders, which provides free dental medical checkup to our old people. It also gives free medicines to our people. And this is one of the typical scenes you would see in the Philippines when a government agency hand in hand works with a non government or private agency. So we care for our older people. Then we also have the OSCA, or the Office of the Senior Citizens Affairs. We believe that to empower, to em by empowering our senior citizens, our old people, we are caring for them. Their voices must be heard because they have something to say for our community, for our government. So we take into consideration the view of our old people and we put them in an organization. They are organized and local government officials support this organization. And in fact, they have allocated funds to support this organization. That is one way of caring our elders. We empower them. We hear their voices in our country. 
And this is one of the examples by empowering them. They go to meetings, they attend conferences, they talk about the issues that affect them, and they bring it up to the government, to the local units, up to the national level. Then we have typical home for the aged. This is, this is an example, it's run by a nun, but we have less typic, We have less home for the aged. We are very few in my country. Why? Because the family is the one that cares most for our old people. Asians generally have this culture that they have close family ties. And in my example, my mom lives with me, she's like 70 years old and I take care of her. We don't usually put our old people to home for the aged. For in my culture, it's like, an odd because we love our old people we must take care of them we rather have them in our house rather than putting them they're putting them away from us so you would see a typical philippine house sometimes in a compound in which the old people are living in this house and on the other house you have their kids living with their kids and then this goes on and it goes on it's like a big compound of family living together that is how close the family ties of filipinos are we care for our elders we care for our young ones, our children, our youth, our young people. This is one example, this is another one. There you go, and this is it also. Let's take it one by one. This is a rural feeding programs. There are areas in my country which really are stricken by poverty and some kids would not eat. And some local government officials, some local government units, and some private organizations would give what we call feeding programs to help the kids eat and at least improve the nutrition. This is Youth Service Day. It is, one of the organ it is one of the activities under the National Youth Commission. The National Youth Commission is an organization under the, office of the under the office of the President of the Republic of the Philippines. It organizes young people, it gives them power, it also empowers young people. We have an example of this like Sangguni Ang Kabataan or the Youth Council. They also go for public office, they elect their own officials at a local level and it happens nationally. So people, young people 15 years old to 17 elect their officials and we call them the Youth Council in my country so to empower them is to give them positions and to give and to hear their voices because if we hear the voice of the, of the old people we must also hear the voices of the young people because these young people will be the next generation and sooner or later they will be holding the, our country they will be chartering compassing the future of our country building schools is one way to care for our people I think you know this song. I will sing this song for you, but I know I don't have a wonderful voice. <laughs> I believe our children are future. Face them well and let them lead the way. Show me all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride. How you, can you give pride to your young people if you don't invest in education? We build our schools. Because in education, we transmit and incorporate and put the legacy of our culture. To care for our young people is to invest in their education. So we build schools for the future of our kids, for the future of our nation. School feeding programs. If there's in a village, we also have it in the school. This picture was taken in my school, actually. So this is a special department of education program in my country. So what do we do about it? We weigh our kids especially grade seven kids, so we weigh them. And if we find out that this kid is underweight, we'll write them on the list. And we provide them feeding programs for the whole year. So we take the weight at the beginning of the school year and take the weight at the end of the school year and compare if there was a change on the weight of the kid because a certain kid has to meet a particular weight to, so that he would be classified as, an, as a student who has like a normal weight. So if, if, if the kid is underweight, that means to say that kid is malnourished. So one way of getting them is to give them feeding programs, especially in our public schools. So not all kids have that money. And basically, children do not have money. So that's one way of caring for them. And these are some of the laws which take care of our young people. We take care of them by giving laws which protect them. These are for our young people. We care for our young women. We care for them because we love women. I don't want to see people hurting women, especially in my case, I have an old mom living with me. So we care for our pregnant women. In fact, we have what we call pregnant women congress. Pregnant women gather together to talk about the issues and they put it in a congress. And we empower their rights by putting them into organizations which advocate their rights. This is a symbol of an organization called Philippine, um, Philippine Council for Women or Philippine Commission for Women. 
to take care of the rights, welfare, and issues of women. And basically, it focuses on stopping the violence against women. And with that, the Philippines takes part with what we call CEDAW. It stands for Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, which was adopted by my country in 1979 from the United Nations General Assembly. We care for our persons with disabilities, so we, we partner with private organizations which take care of these people and make aware of people about taking care and treating them equally. This is an example of a sort of tab. This sort of tab, we collect them. We like have 10 pieces, 10,000 pieces. For example, 10 pieces, 10,000 pieces would make one wheelchair. So we, yeah, we melt them and they go to a manufacturing company and make a wheelchair out of this sort of tops. And we give them to our person with disabilities. And we provide pre-dental and medical checkup for them. We love our people with disabilities. We treat them fairly. We care for our community during disaster. We provide relief. We build schools. We, fear, we care for our environment. And of course, we also build houses for our community. Community does not only mean people, but also environment, but also school, but also everything about your surroundings that we care for. We have organizations that will help them, the GMA Foundation, the ABSL Foundation, and the DSWD, the leading government agency. This is about caring for others in my country. For that short time, I hope I was able to enlighten you about caring for others. And to finally recapture and recapture what I have shared to you, <coughs> I would end by this video clip. Oh, wait. It's gone. Let's see. philosophy education is a catalyst for change then let us revolutionize it to bring the best for our people for our country and for the world mabuhay ang pilipino mabuhay ang pilipinas and to ponder on this let me share a thought from mohandas gandhi the world has enough for every man's need but not for every man's greed thank you and good morning everyone yes.